Welcome to episode two of season six at Hull. We have a lot of money to spend and today I hope to spend the majority of it. Uh, thank you for all of your feedback on the first episode and the last episode of last season. I Well, it's not really a shortlist anymore. I can't call it that. There's too many names on it. We've plenty to look at, plenty to go through. One thing I want you guys to look at is yesterday's Football Manager video. Please go and drop that video a like and let me know after watching it. It's not that long, 10 to 15 minutes. Let me know if you'd like to see more of that kind of content on the YouTube channel. But I really would like the feedback on that video if you guys could be so kind as to head over and watch it and let me know. That would be great. Right, moving forward then in this FIFA episode, of course, as ever, drop the video a like if you enjoy. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any more FIFA or potentially Football Manager content. Transfer Hub. Yeah, it's definitely a long list, not a short list. I'm actually not looking for a right back now. We made the decision to keep Bayar uh, as my backup right back rather than move him to centre back. So... Uh, the guy we've got a right back already, Tavares, will stay as my starting right back and Bayer will be his backup. So we're looking for two centre backs, a high rated and a kind of middle of the range, and then a left back and a centre mid and a striker. And maybe, well, if we sell, have to sell Pinto to afford everybody, then yes, a right winger too. So, starting at centre-back, you can see the names on the list here. I'm waiting on a couple of scout reports still, but there are some higher value options. There are some lower value options. Vardiol could be very good, actually, as a lower-rated option. And, crucially, he can play at left-back too. So, he might be a wonderful player to go for and actually nail two birds with one stone. He could be a backup centre-back or a backup left-back. He's certainly quick enough to be... Uh, good out wide left as well with 90 sprint speed and 91 strength is outrageous to be fair. So I'm very keen on him and he's not that expensive either. Also an option could be an aging Harry Maguire. Because of course he used to play for Hull. So that's a potential. We've obviously got, as you can see, Tapsoba and Senesi who's at Arsenal and Kunda. They're all high value, highly rated players. Uh, Zagadou is similarly at... Uh, City. Cabango, I know nothing about, but he comes recommended by you guys, so we'll wait for the scout report. He's at Swansea, who aren't in the Premier League, so I, I don't know if he's going to be that good, but you never know. At left back, Tavares's bro brother, I think. I think they're brothers. There might be a different relation, but they're certainly related. Nuno to go with uh, our right back. Potential at left back, although again, if I end up going for Fadiol, he could play at both centre back and left back. Maybe I go Maguire and Vardiol, maybe, maybe, I'm not sure yet. Uh, James Justin is a, obviously a great go-to backup left back and right back for that matter. And cheap too in this save. Jamal Lewis is, oh, I've just moved to Sevilla unfortunately, so that's a no for him sadly. Sorry, I uh, didn't realise that. Centelles is £38 million at Arsenal. Uh, Omar Richards, I don't know anything about him. I'm waiting for his scout report to come back. Luca Pellegrini is decent. 83 rated, very, very capable. 91 stand tackle really stands out to me there. And 92 crossing too. And he's more expensive than some of the other low to mid rated, 80 rated players. But still a good option. Andy Robertson obviously used to play for Hull. I moved from them to Liverpool, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have the money to be able to bring him in at this stage. Uh, Mendes, Nuno Mendes, another Nuno that we could potentially bring in, waiting for a scout report on him. Now, at centre mid, I'm looking for a backup player. Now, Alex Kral is six foot one, but has 83 jumping. I'm content. Ah, oh, he's too important. The club won't sell him. Never mind. He looked like a great option to potentially bring in at centre back to kind of sign as a CDM and change his position to a centre-back. But it doesn't look like that's going to be an option, unfortunately, because they're not willing to sell him. Yuck. Okay, never mind. We won't get Kral then. That kind of scuppers my plans. Uh, we have Thomas Suchek, who obviously is a rock-solid CDM. But I'm wanting someone that can play primarily centre mid and maybe pushed forward into Cam. Frank Onyeka was recommended as well. He's brilliant physically. Unbelievable. Technically, though, needs improving. So I'm probably going to not go for him. Matteo Genduzzi is decent physically and decent technically as well. Good in the pass. Good ball control. His finishing is not amazing at 63, but he could probably get a shot on target at the very least. 
Well, Manga Tuke is a potential out wide or striker option. Similarly, Mason Greenwood. Then we have some more central midfield options. Marcos Antonio piques my interest with that pace and the good passing and decent finishing. But he is expensive and apparently too important to his club. So there goes that idea. Ricky Pudge. Now, it is to be a backup position because I want James Madison to start still. So Ricky Pudge is astronomically expensive and very, very highly rated. So I'm leaning away from that. Curtis Jones is probably perfect for that role. 94 finishing, great ball control and dribbling. His passing could be trained. Physically, he looks decent. Decent agility, good stamina, good reactions. Fairly expensive for an 82 rated player, but presumably he has decent growth potential. So maybe with regards some cams that could probably play a little bit deeper... Bogdan Lednev is a player I don't know much about at all, so I'm scouting him. We obviously had a previous look at Emil Smith-Rowe, but he's probably probably an option that we could bring in should we lose Pinto. Uh, Musiala, I know nothing of him, but he looks great for a young 22-year-old and not that expensive. Could he be a centre mid, though? I'm not sure with the low strength and the terrible tackling. I don't know. I'm not sure. Bader, obviously, is the Royce regen that's actually not that good anymore. And then at striker, I have a number of options that you guys have, you guys have offered me for backup players. With Joshua Xerxes, who could play backup at Cam as well, to be fair. And he looks very good for the value and the rating. Troy Parrott is now at Barcelona in this save. That's uh, one I actually not happened recently. He's actually in the process of maybe going to Everton. So I'm not sure whether to jump on that. But I don't know how much he's valued at or what his rating is. So or ratings are, so I, I, I'd be hesitant there. Obafemi, don't, oh, he's just gone to Sheffield United, fair enough, that's a no then. Adeyemi as a backup, of course we're looking for backup to Malik Wilkes. Unless Pinto goes, and then we move Malik Wilkes to right wing, and put someone else at striker. But Malik Wilkes has been so good at striker, I'd be reluctant to do that. I can't really replace a striker that's won the golden boot two years in a row, can I really? Uh, Adam Klozek is a player that could play up top or out wide. Probably more out wide with only 84 finishing, so he could be an option. Uh, Arezzo, Matias Arezzo, I know nothing about him, but supposedly physically is going to be very good. Lataro Martinez is obviously unreal. Uh, and then this, I believe, is a Jamie Vardy regen in Lee Davis. I think he's the guy. I looked for, um, I looked for a Ronaldo and Messi regen. They're both still playing. Cristiano Ronaldo is 40, Messi is 38. Uh, there was no Zlatan regen that I could find. I think maybe this guy potentially, Matthias Simovic, but I'm waiting for the scout report. This is that Mazota guy we looked at last season when we saw him come on for City. He's good physically, but technically 66 finishing means he's pretty dead. And Timothy Weir was recommended as well as a striker, but I'm going to probably lean away from him. So at present, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in any position, really. I think, I think at centre-back... I'd like to go for Maguire, purely for the bring him home style content. Although he's really not very quick, but he would be back up. So, well, Vardio would be back up too, and he'd be very quick. So, perhaps actually alongside each other, they'd be pretty decent. And then I wouldn't need to go for a left back, because I could just play Vardio there. So, maybe I'll go for both Maguire and Vardio, and then we're done in defence. Alright, I've made that decision. Let's see if we can't bring Harry Maguire back to Hull City uh, and I hope they wouldn't want too much for him either. I'll offer 20 and they may even accept that straight off the bat. 37.7? No, 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 no. Never in a million years am I going to pay that much for a slow old Harry, Harry Maguire. Yes, I like the idea of bringing him back but I'm not going to ruin my the rest of my entire transfer window to try and do it. You either give me in for this I'm not paying it. I'm sorry. I am not paying that for Harry Maguire. There's that pipe dream dead. Sorry, Harry. Maybe in a later window, but right now I need that money in a number of other places more so than with you. So Vardiol is probably going to be the one that I go for then. And he could play in a multi... No, I do not want to pay £68.6 million for an 80-rated centre-back. Thank you. I know you're Barcelona, but let's not get too carried away. Right. I will start cheeky and low again. He is not that high rated, so we should be able to get him pretty low. And 32 is where they've come in at. So I should be able to hopefully be able to work them down from there. I'd rather not pay any more than 28. 
Because, again, we have a number of deals we need to get done in this window. So how about 27 and a half? I've shown willingness to come up. You show willingness to come down. Thank you. They have done. Thank you very much. What's he on? 100 grand a week, though. Yikes. That's a lot of money. Hopefully, he'll be willing to take a wage cut. Uh, rotation is all he'd be good for. Well, not all he'd be good for, but all he'd be, we'd be willing to give him. And he's happy to sign that. A long-term deal should hopefully mean that the wages are slightly lower. No release course is fine by me. Now, tell me what you want a week, because I don't want to oversell myself. I was going to offer him 70-odd, so I'm glad they've done that. I'll remove the bonus, and maybe they might up it by five grand or something. No, they'll sign that. Bang in. Right. New signing number one in at the club. So we'll hold off on another centre-back and or left-back, because Vardiol is certainly going to be good enough for the time being in both roles as backup. So we'll make sure we get another centre-mid. And then I need to decide what to do at striker or winger. Depends. Basically, I think I need to get every other position done before I decide on striker or winger. Because, I mean, if Pinto goes, I, I do think I would like to keep Malik Wilkes at striker rather than moving him to right wing. So we are going to need another centre-back. For the time being, I'm going to look for the midfielder first. Look for the midfielder first. Now, I was going to go for Crow. But that, that plan has been scuppered. Curtis Jones looks decent, but he's expensive. But he's good in key areas. That's annoying, that's annoying, that's annoying. Go on then, let's try and bring Curtis Jones in because he can play slightly further up as well. Hopefully we can get him for a little bit under, a little bit under 40 million, if possible. Are they willing to sell him fairly cheap? They might not be at all. And they are, and but they want Rob Wallace. Sorry, I want him to play alongside Rob Wallace. <laughs> not... Instead of Rob Wallace, they want 55 million for him. Might be a step too far for Curtis Jones, unless we can get them to significantly come down, which they have done so far. And if they do so again, we might have ourselves a deal, Jurgen. Don't really want to pay more than 42. Ha! Oh, I'm going to get him for 39 and a half. Bang in! Right. This is going really well so far, and the money is spreading nicely. Sporadic squad roll is perfect too, because it means his morale won't be negatively affected. Four years is perfectly fine by me. Please give me an idea of what you want wage-wise. This told me everything they want so far. Now's when they go, oh, let us know what you want wage-wise. Okay, 61 grand is fine. I will counter that and drop it a little bit to 54, but I will keep your signing bonus the same, and they will sign it. Oh, this is really going quite well. Okay, so that's a backup centre-back and a backup centre-mid, both in now already. Lovely. Enjoying this. Right, so let's see how much money we've got left and what else we need to do. Do I go for a left-back? Let's see how much money have I got left first. Still got 60 mil. Right, I could go for a left-back. Let's wait for some scout reports then next. Let's wait for some scout reports because I could maybe go for a cheaper centre-back and use Vardiol at left-back. So we'll wait for those scout reports first before doing anything else. Pick... Okay! Pierre-Emil... Ah, oh, if I... I just bought a bloody midfielder! Just bought Curtis Jones, and they're willing to offer me 137 million plus 86-rated Pierre-Emil Hoiberg. Christ alive, why did I not advance today? Because that would have been bloody perfect, wouldn't it? Fuck's sake. Okay, um, have you got anyone else that we could maybe use as an exchange player? Oh, Hoybjerg would have been brilliant. Fuck. God, that's annoying. Uh, let's negotiate, shall we? Spinto is a player I'd be willing to let go to try and... Uh, let's propose another exchange player. Have you got out wide? Bergvain, Siankov... Nikola Pepe. Oh, no, what do you want? Nikola Pepe. Sigankov could be good out wide. But a centre back. Taps over. We were intrigued by. What about left back? Regulon. Estupinia. He was mentioned in the comment section and I didn't put him on my shortlist. Ooh. These are some decisions to be made, aren't they? Estupinia would be good. Regulon would be great. But I do want Elder to continue to start. If Pinto goes, then we're going to need someone to come in to replace Pinto. If we can get that done in this deal, then that's perfect. And Bergvain would be wonderful. 
I had him in a previous save? I can't recall. I definitely haven't had Sigankov. So maybe we go for Sigankov. At... Hmm. Right. I'm going to go Sigankov. Propose a new transfer fee of 145. I know I've kind of gone up in value and up in transfer sum as well. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Now what I could do... What I could do... What? I... What? Oh, it all depends if... Um, he... I need to... Yeah, negotiate. I'm, my brain just died all of a sudden. I wanted to see what he's on. Oh, he's on 140 grand a week. <whistles> I'll offer him rotation because mm, what I could do is move... I feel harsh moving Wilkes away from the wide position, away from the striker position. But I could move Wilkes wide and sign a phenomenal. Wow, he's willing to nearly halve his wages. I don't even know why I edited that. Sold, signed, sealed. Please, Pinto, agree terms. And at least then, if he stays in the Prem, we get the chance to keep tabs on him as well and see how he progresses. Oh, do I move Wilkes out wide and maybe buy Lautaro Martinez up top? Oh God, the tent. The, the temptation is very, very high. Right, let's see what happens with that Pinto deal then. And from there, we'll take it moving forward. Oh, dearie me, this is advancing a lot quicker than I thought it would do. I've only gone forward one day. Christ alive, this is going to be a frenetic window, isn't it? As we approach the Everton game, Pinto sold to Spurs. Gone. Sigankov is in. An offer for Stir you again, 200 odd million pounds this time from Barcelona rather than Bayern Munich, but we shall keep him. And sorry, Mr. Wallace, but no, you are not going there. You're going back there. And sorry, Mr. Ewing, but you're not staying there. Sigankov goes wide right for the time being. So he has 91 pace, 84 passing, 85 dribbling. He's four star, four star, and left footed, so can cut in and shoot, which I like the idea of. 83 finishing on him as well. If we put a development plan on him, then he could grow even more. Now, the, the question in my mind now is whether I sign a, a striker and move Wilkes out wide and Sigankov could be the most phenomenal backup winger, or whether I leave Wilkes there, now go and buy another centre-back and a left-back. I think... I think... I think I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards putting Wilkes out wide, you know, and getting a new striker. Because we, the right wing spot was somewhere where we didn't get as much as we might well have needed from the player that was there in Pinto. Whereas, if Wilkes went there, we might get a bit more from Wilkes in that role and more from a striker. But I might not get as much from a new striker as I have from Wilkes in that role. So I'm still torn. Let's let's play with Sigankov first, not jump to any conclusions. Let's play with him first, see if he's any good, and then make a decision from there. We'll go and have a press conference first to boost morale a little bit. Uh, we have the yes, we have the quality to qualify for the Champions League. We won the bloody league last year. Are you very, very short of memory? I certainly would like more squad depth though. And we will be certainly signing a left back, I think, now in this window, but what to do with centre-back? Because Valio can play both. Mm. Oh, this window is... Geez. At that stage of a career mode where it's so difficult to know what to do for the best because there are too many good players in your team. And too much money available as well. Right, let's go and play Everton first, shall we? And see if we can't start our title defence with a win. Everton with Pacheco in goal still. Dest, Alderete, Nunez and Haps. Arna Meyer gets the start, alongside Polinia and Danny van der Beek. Yari Vacher and Ismail Asar at striker. And Idrissi on the left-hand side of their front three. A player I've got at Cambridge now in that football manager save. Hmm, not much on the bench, though. Good starting eleven, however. Right, Victor. Show me what you're all about, please, my man. Driven out wide to Lewis Potter. And into Malik Wilkes. Look at the man at left-back gunning to get forward. Callum Elder. Stood towards the middle and... Oh, Nunez wins the header. Barnett punches the floor in frustration. So very close to getting the opening goal of the league season. Charlie Barnett wanting to pick up where he left off last year. Not going to be able to shoot from there. But we can get that to Malik Wilkes. Can we? No, Stoyu. Oh, can't win it back either. 
Not to worry, still nil-nil after 17 minutes played, but we are the better side so far. Nice tackle by Tavares, but they're going to get the throw. Idrissi back again, perhaps. Nice little chest control around the corner to Donny van der Beek. They're working here. Something that Stey will put an end to is what they're working here. Madison, Sangare, through the gap quickly. Oh, meant for Wilkes, not finding him. Barnett will spread that all the way out to Elder. That's a lovely ball. Now, can we find the teammate in the middle to give us the lead? I don't think we can, but there's... Ah, played it the wrong side of him. Barnett, Tequila has put it out of his feet. Bent! Oh! The way the keeper sprawled with the delayed dive had me thinking that was going to bend in the, in the back of the net. And it was... It was coming back towards goal, just not quite quickly enough. We've had all of the play in this first half, but I can't get a goal. Sigankov to Sangare. Out to Lewis Potter. Go on, Manic, make me the run. He didn't. Tottenham have got their man. But we've got their man too. We'll wait and see who wins out on that front. At least we'll be able to see uh, his goal-scoring acumen as well. Acumen, is that the right word? Mm, maybe. Madison with the corner for Hull City. Delivered well, and, well, Sangari met it well too, but over the bar. I'm kind of pleased that Pinto's gone to another English club because it means we can keep tabs on, A, his performances, but, B, his, his like, goal-scoring record in the league as well. Like we can see how many goals he gets, how many assists he gets. We'll get to play against him and see what it's like to play against him rather than with him. Very pleased that we got the deal done. It was the transfer that was going to unlock the rest of our whole squad, really. So it kind of needed to be done. And I'm glad that it, we got a player in in return as well, because that took an extra decision out of my out of my hands. Madison, around the corner there to Barnett. We'll go back to Sigankov, who's going to dart back on that left foot. Look for Wilkes, who's turned the defender. And Malik Wilkes makes it 1-0. We've finally made the breakthrough against Everton Football Club. And the man that will at least be staying in the starting lineup, whether he'll be up there or over there, I'm not sure yet. But he's certainly still on the score sheet and starting his attempt to win the Golden Boot outright rather than sharing it for the third season in a row begins with the first goal of the season. Dest down the line to Yari Vasheran. Because we've taken the lead eventually doesn't mean we can switch off at the back because whoa that was supposed to go to Garcia Vaya you imagine if he played that all the way to Ismail Azar and they just instantly equalized I'd have been pissed right Wilkes away from one going again Malik he's kind of run the wrong side the defender there space for Zigankov can we get back on that left and try and bend it it's a good block by Nunez he's been rock solid for them at the back so far today very good defensive performance from him. And to be fair, from Everton, 1-0 uh, down, but it could be so many more if they weren't as solid as they have been. We've performed very well offensively. They've performed very well defensively. But in the end, it's going to be, well, it looks like at least, it's going to be our offence that comes out on top. Can't quite get to that. And when the defender either commits to me or Keen Lewis Potter is in behind... No, I should have played the extra pass. Ah, piss. We'll just say we can make it too. Well, King Lewis Potter's there again. Go on, Charlie. Into your feet. Spin. Ah, shake off the defender, maybe. Easier said than done, apparently. Wilkes is there. Oh, Haps, what an interception. Like I say, Everton been good defensively. But unfortunately for them, they were breached the once. And it is looking like it's going to be that the once that sees us get all three points here. Because I don't think they're going to score unless he can find Ishmael Asar. With an early cross here, which he can't. Cavani with a late cross, however. And that couldn't have fallen more kindly. For Idrissi. Flipped on by Saar. Looking for the man at the back post. Clear Why well, I say cleared away. Was it actually the man at the back post that flipped that back to Idrissi? I'm not sure. But he's thumped at home. Wonder, let's have a look. Who did it? Did, is it giving the assist to someone? Let's have a look. Player ratings. No, it definitely was the defender that kicked that to him. That was his attempted clearance there, Tavares. Hmm, not good enough, my guy. Not good enough at all. Curtis Jones, would you like to come off the bench? Not there. There. Sangari can continue on. And Bayard can come on at right back. He's grown up to 78, so hopefully he continues to grow. Perhaps that 
spell at right back last year when Tavares was injured will actually help him keep growing as a backup wing back, which would be very helpful indeed if he could do that. It would also have been very helpful if we didn't bloody concede, but never mind. It looks like it's going to be a 1 1 draw, so just as I was giving it the big ending commentary about us going to get the edge with a 1 0 win. Curtis Jones's pass is slightly blocked by Donny van der Beek, and well, unless anything happens immediately, I will see you at the final whistle. Something might have happened immediately. Hang on, stay with me. Wilkes to Barnett. Looking for Wilkes again. Up against Alderete. Turns. And there's Sangare. And, oh, Onamaya comes across. And I was just about to play that infield to Charlie Barnett. Never mind. We might end up conceding at the other end. Hold on. Hopefully we don't. But there is the possibility. Onamaya into Ismail Assar. Yeah, that'll do. A 1-1. One, one. It's not a corner, surely. He just shot wide, didn't he? If they score now, I'm pissed. Donny van der Beek off and Guevara on. Oh, Galaxi came to it and got there, thankfully. And Curtis Jones, just get rid of it, please. That'll be the game. 1-1 one, one draw against Everton then. Back to the transfer window we go. We should have won that, shouldn't we? Had a transfer bid for Tavares, actually, which I will reject, despite the fact that he was perhaps slightly questionable in that last game. And to be fair... <laughs> Perhaps slightly questionable at times last season as well, but I have a decision to make now. And I'm still not sure whether it's the right one or not to move Mallet Wilkes from striker to left back. He's just scored our only goal of the previous game. But would we have scored more if he was on the right and we had someone else up top? I have no idea right now. Interest shown in Thomas Sute, but we've got our central midfielder now, annoyingly, when we could have had... Could have had Pierre Emil Hoiberg. I'm, I'm actually quite annoyed about that, but it serves me right for not advancing a day before making the decision. So, still waiting on a couple of scout reports for centre backs, but I do now have the money to go back in for Harry Maguire, should we want to, and probably um, Andy Robertson as well. But we'll hold off. Um, yeah, I can take all the centre mids off now, can't I? I'll do that. And also. Uh, Take my solar off. Are you, what? Am I going to see your rating? Oh, he doesn't look that good at all. Okay, I've no idea if he's his Latin region or not now. Easton will remove. Burgess will remove. Davis, I think he might be the the regen of Jamie Vardy, but, I mean, he's he's not very good, so we'll just leave it there for now. How much are you? 128 mil. Jeez. Arezo. Yeah. Oh, God. I tell you what, let's... let's. Oh, I just saw that Troy Parrott has actually completed his move to Everton. Let's sim a game with Sikankov on the right and see if we get a positive result. Wilkes up top. We lose 3-1. Excuse me, Newcastle. Don't do that to me, please. Right. So, I think that means that we need higher rated players here. So, I am going to move Wilkes there. Change that to right wing. And Sigankov can go on the bench. And I'm going to buy a new striker. So we've got Neto, Wallace, Jones. We've got wingers. We've got centre-backs. We've got... I do want another left-back. So left-back and a striker, cheers. How much money have I got to spend on left-back and a striker? 183 million, maybe a little bit more because of the transfer budget. Let me get the striker first. Let me get the striker first because I could always go centre back and striker because Fadio could play left back. So, oh, do I go for Lautaro Martinez or do I go for Xerxes? Xerxes does have 87 finishing. I mean, Lautaro Martinez is surely phenomenal though. Annoyed about Troy Parrott. He might have been a decent player to get. I don't normally go for him because he's a bit of a, an obvious one to go for earlier in saves. But this is probably going to be our last season at Hull. Do I go for Xerxes? Do I go for Adeyemi? How tall is he? 5 foot 10. Medium, medium work rate. He's so fast though. His finishing's only 83 though. I mean, go big or go home, Chez. We'll go big. Dear Lautaro, would you like to come to... The KCOM Stadium. 157? You know, I'd be entitled to almost accept that. But we'll try and get him for a little bit 
less if we can. 137? 157. Oh, come on. I know I'm still trying to be a little bit frugal here when we've got a lot of money available, but if I'm to bring in a, a left back or centre back of decent... Stop it! Left back or centre back of decent quality, I'm still going to need a decent amount of money available to me. Especially if, because of Lautaro's wages, I'm going to have to move some of my transfer budget into the wage budget to accommodate for this. Now, what's he going to want a week? He's on £280,000 a week at the minute. Yikes. He wants a crucial squad role. I think you can probably warrant that, to be honest. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter how long you sign for. Like I say, it's probably going to be the last season here. Disregard the release clause. Financially, what would you like? Is £200,000 and a £1 million signing on fee enough for you, sir? A £1.5 million signing on fee. Okay. Lautaro Martinez is in. We have a new striker. Malik Wilkes is now out wide. And Fleming is not going to be on that bench anymore. So Fleming can be the man that comes out for Martinez. I might put George Long on the bench. Oh my god. We just signed Latara Martinez. So my front four is now ridiculous. And we should get more from Wilkes and Martinez in those roles than we did from Wilkes and Pinto. I hope. And we've got Sigankov to come on off the bench as a backup. We've got Pedro Neto off the bench as a backup. Jones and Wallace in the midfield. This is the sort of depth that we needed. This is the sort of depth that I wanted. And I've got a better centre-back. How much money do I have left? I think I'm going to go for a left-back. Because it, I still want Garcia Vaya to grow. I'm going to go for a left-back. Who have we got and how much money have I got? Who have we got on this shortlist? I'll still leave the left-backs there for now. Sorry, the centre-back's there for now. Let me get all of the attacking players off, because I now don't need any of you guys. Or the centre-mids, actually, for that matter. I'm curious to know what he looks like, so I'll hold off on taking him off. But sorry, Marcus Antonio. Sorry, Budge. Sorry, Waman Gaduka. Sorry, Marcus Greenwood. Marcus Greenwood? Mason Greenwood. Come on, Ches. And Thomas Suchek and Onyeka and Genduzi. Now, Mendes. He looks like he could be pretty decent. Oh, his stand tackle's not amazing. Maybe this is where I wait for the scout report. James Justin could be good as a backup, though, and we know that we can afford him, and he's not that expensive. But it might be nice to get Tavares, who's the other... Uh, Tavares, we could have a Tavares on both sides, at least in the squad. But then it might be great to bring Andy Robertson back. But then would I start Andy Robertson ahead of Callum Eld? I kind of feel like I had to. And do I want him? I mean, it's Andy Robertson. Well, let's bring Andy Robertson back to the club if we can. I can't afford to. Never mind, goodbye. Uh, offer a transfer fee. I mean, I know he's aging, but they're, they're almost certainly not going to accept this, are they? I, mm, yeah, I thought I had more money than that. I don't. Yeah, I, I understand, Jürgen. I understand. Okay. Jamal Lewis. Oh, he's just gone to Sevilla. Yeah, I forgot to take him off my list. Bollocks. So, let's wait for this scout report on Omar Richards, although he doesn't cost much, so I imagine he's not going to be that good. Nuno Mendes could be good, though. So, Andy Robertson's a no. Does that mean, am I going to have enough money to bring in someone like Luca Pellegrini? I'm not sure I would. Luca Pellegrini did look good, though. Centellas is decent, and it would weaken a rival at Arsenal. His tackling's not amazing, though. Tavares is decent in the stand tackle, and good passing, and quick. Tavares is taking a leading, a leading spot right now. Pellegrini, though, had 91 stand tackle, and he's good in the crop. I'm going to go for Pellegrini. I'm not even going to bother waiting for the, uh, for the rest of the... Scout reports to come back. I'm just going to go for Pellegrini. He's not valued that highly. And he's mid-20s. Mm -mm -mm. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Garcia Vaya is the future of our centre-back role. Thank you very much. And no, I am still going to kind of need some money left to actually offer him a contract, if you don't mind. Uh, up that to 42 then. I don't know what he's on a week. He shouldn't be on that much. Stop it! He shouldn't be on that much at uh, Real Sociedad. So I hope that we could we could get him in with whatever we'd have left. Oh, seriously! Come on now. I want I want I want Pellegrini. Well, take some time. If they come back asking for fifty odd again, then I'm just going to walk away and tell them to get screwed. 
Yes! Thank you! What's he on a week? 36 and a half grand. Buzzing! We're going to get everybody in that we wanted. Important squad troll. Yep. You can have that. I probably could have... Maybe I should have negotiated rotation. Never mind. It means that Calamelda gets his first team spot still. But Luca Pellegrini is still going to get plenty of football. And I've got the money to be able to offer him a decent wage. And a half decent signing on fee. And he should be willing to sign that. No? Okay. I actually can't afford that. So could we maybe remove the bonus? I still can't afford it. Can I not? I can afford that. Oh, no, I'm 100, 111 pounds, for Christ's sake. For the matter of 111 pounds, surely we can... Oh, go away, please, God. Why is this Why is this transfer window been so frustrating? Look, sign that. I can't... Fucking... Fucking... Fuck, fuck. Sign that, please. Don't tell me for the sake of... Oh, thank God for that. Oh, panic over. We've got... We've done it. We've... We've finished the transfer window and I literally don't think I have anything left. I've spent every last penny. <laughs> I think that might be the first time I've done that. Every single last penny spent. Luca Pellegrini onto the bench. So we now have significantly better squad depth. We should be able to cope with European football now. Kind of 16th in the league after those opening two games. Let's uh, let's go and win our next one against Arsenal, shall we? And then hopefully we can rise up the table a little bit. Right, Arsenal with Bernd Leno still in goal for them. Maitland-Niles holding Lindelof, Senesi and Tierney. Deli Ali and Matteo Genduzzi. Cabral, Mateus Cunha and Christian Pavon as the front three. Lindelof from one rival. Ali from another rival. Jack Grealish on the bench still for them. Centelles, who we looked at on the bench as well. Well, can we get our first win of the league season? I can't quite um quite believe I'm saying that after having played Newcastle and Everton so far in the opening two games. But I'd certainly like to get off the mark now, please. I'd certainly like to be able to play a pass properly, please. Driven across to Lewis Potter and into Lautaro. His first touch of the ball is a Hull City player, Lewis Potter. Well, the run of Lautaro has opened it up here for Lewis Potter and he will not... Need to be asked twice to take that opportunity. Might not have been involved in the goal properly, Lautaro Martinez, but certainly helped create it, even without being directly involved in the finish. Really pleased with that. It was his run that took the two defenders away, opened up the space and then get it back on the right. Bury it in the bottom corner. We are in front. Keen Lewis Potter at it again. Jovan Cabral. Inside. To Mateus Cunha, back to Matteo Ginduzi. They love a Matt at Arsenal apparently right now. They got Matt Ryan in real life as well, so that holds up. <laughs> that holds up in real life too. Unfortunately, Mateus uh, Mateus Cunha gives them an equalising goal. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Back level again, Arsenal. That didn't take long at all, did it? Some quick one twos, and then again the run of. It's just like our goal. A run of one man draws defenders out of the way, opens top space for somebody else to find a way through and bury the ball in the back of the net. All right, after 13 minutes, it's 1-1. This could be quite the game. Get to that, Callum. Well done. Elder does well to hold on to possession there. Or re regain possession there. Sangari out wide to Wilkes. Tavares does love getting forward, so we'll try and do that with him. And, yep. Good. Madison saw that I was turning inside and came towards me. Here's Lautaro. There's Barnett. Oh, oh, so close to getting Lautaro Martinez in again. I haven't been able to have a shot with him yet because Arsenal just keep picking off all of my through balls. They've been defending just as stubbornly as Everton. And unfortunately and annoyingly, they've been just as good going forward as Everton were as well. Thankfully, apparently not as good as Newcastle going forward. Forward to Lautaro. Oh, God, his dribbling's pretty good, isn't it? Christ. Look for Lewis Potter. An assist for Lautaro Martinez, perhaps. No, a great save. Sprawling low from Bernd Leno to ensure that it can't be swept home by Lewis Potter, who can't get the ball back either. Throw for Arsenal, but that should have been 2-1. I should have finished that. Okay, Mason Mount has gone to Real Madrid, apparently. So he was at Tottenham. £85 million is what they're saying. Mason Mount from Tottenham to Real Madrid. Oh, good clearance by Casillas. I needed to make that. 
Otherwise they were in there and Wilkes can't quite get to that. And now Cabral could still end up leading Arsenal towards a goal. Malik Wilkes doing some work, but still we can't get the ball off them. They've got Phil Foden and Mason Mount now, Real Madrid. Luis Potter brings that down nicely. And Martinez can have to be quick, but gets it out of his feet nicely. King Luis Potter holds his run. Oh God, that was a heavy touch. It will find Lautaro Martinez, though. And I get a little bit lucky there. Oh, another heavy touch, but he's lifted over the keeper and it will go in. A smart finish from Keen Lewis Potter to make up for the mistake of the heavy touch. Why he took such a heavy touch, I've no idea. It kind of bounded off his foot, bounced away. Lovely ball by Lautaro. Not this touch, but this one. You can see it bounce off his foot, but he's just got the pace to get there ahead of the keeper and lift it over Bernd Leno to give us a 2-1 lead. Really nicely spun back towards goal as well to ensure that it made it into the back of the net. His third goal of the league season so far, Lautaro with an assist. And we have ourselves a second. Lautaro, they've backed off, but Barnett's there. Oh, and I was just about to try and return it to Lautaro Martinez, but the Argentine isn't going to get the opportunity. He's played well here. I've enjoyed using him. And it's going to take a little while to figure out how to best work him and if we perhaps need to tweak his individual instructions a little bit but he's got an assist on debut and that's certainly a positive sign that he's linking up well with his teammates Tavares just stood there and got the ball back Charlie Barnett dropping back to try and get involved and now we can push forward with Sangare oh, it's perhaps a bit ambitious of me to try and get it around that corner just under 20 minutes to go I might make a change just to try and hold on to things in the midfield maybe Curtis Jones can give us some fresh legs for James Madison who undoubtedly is tired as he always is in that middle role which is why I was kind of desperate for another box-to-box -box midfielder that was slightly higher rated than what we had around the corner Madison might get the assist on the floor this time no need to loft it Charlie Barnett makes it 3-1 and we will certainly get the win now right Madison can come off then and Curtis Jones can come on no Rob Wallace can come on and that will do us for now I could bring Fadiol on but I won't yet We'll leave it as is and probably leave it with just that one change. We lead by three goals to one. We are going to get our first win of the season. Tierney driving forward from left back. Strong but fair challenge from Rob Wallace there. And Sangare just standing in the way. Lautaro Martinez gets it off there to Barnett. To Lautaro again. Can we get away from the defender maybe? King Lewis Potter's made a good run. Lautaro will find Barnett. Oh, touch is decent. Try and speed that through there to Lewis Potter. Back to Rob Wallace. And we do have a fourth. That felt a little bit disjointed for me in the process of doing it. But it might have looked like an incredible move. I'll have to look back in editing. But I, I'd never feel like I was fully in control of what I was doing and where I was moving the ball. But we get the goal. So we'll take it. Lovely finish by Rob Wallace. Just to tuck it home at the near post. And, well, that win was worth waiting for, wasn't it? Hole four, Arsenal won. A replica of the FA Cup final from a couple of seasons ago. Nice to actually get some payback for that. And hopefully this season we'll actually win the FA Cup. That's going to be the plan. Anyway, we have three points on the board for the first time. We're up to four after three games. I'd like to think we'll be slightly higher up the table after a handful more. Cal Melder has completed uh, his development schedule. And he's now up to 86 rated, which is great. Can we continue that improvement yet further? 93 weeks? Uh, no, no, we can't continue that growth any further. But not to worry. That's done nicely. And Rob Wallace says... he's. Oh, I didn't read it. He's enjoying something, I think. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really that bothered about Rob Wallace anymore. There was, a, there was a moment in time where I was like, oh, he could be a really good player, but... I just kind of, he's fallen to the back of my mind now and I'm not really that bothered about improving him too much. Uh, we will, however, improve, a, I'd rather have a five-star weak foot, to be honest. 11 weeks for that. Nine weeks for that. It's going to improve his free kick accuracy and his crossing. I mean, his passing needs more of an improvement than his dribbling, so I'm actually going to go for wide playmaker and then maybe we go for inverted wide mid midfielder after that. It says he's in poor form as well, so should he be able to get uh, a better performance in the next simulated game? then uh, hopefully he'll be able to change a little bit sooner. Leicester have bid £204 million for Malik Wilkes. Where have Leicester got that money from? Dear me. Have we got, have we got a, day, a game on deadline day? We do, don't we? Yeah, it's West Ham away. We will sim that. 
And we'll have a quick simulation of training all the way through, though. I'm not going to bother spending my time going in and out and in and out and in and out. I really can't bother right now as we're approaching deadline day. Whoa, there come a load of scout reports back, but we don't need any of you anymore. Oh, a loan offer for Fleming. Uh, no, I'll keep, I'll keep the body at the club for now, just in case we need him. But if, if mm, we haven't had the need for him between now and January, then he can go out on loan in January for the rest of the season. But I'm going to make sure that I've at least got the extra bodies at the club to start the year, and then we'll take it from there. But let's go and see this game against West Ham then on deadline day. Come on, advance, please. Oh, it's not hard. There we go. Well done. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. I couldn't have done more in the transfer window, I don't think. I literally spent every single penny I could possibly have, or possibly had. Interesting, Cabango, he wasn't very good, by the way, like 74 rated or something silly. Uh, the worry that the club is, I've got it under control, Keen. I've got it under control. Don't worry, mate. We'll be back where we belong sooner rather than later. You just do your job. Lautaro has done his job. His first goal for the club comes in a single goal to nil victory away from home against West Ham. And I'm kind of glad that I've avoided West Ham away with a sim game because I always get a bit of a headache when I play with those bubbles. Some huge steals in this window though. You can see uh, Lautaro Mart oh, might be in the way. Lautaro Martinez, 145 million pounds. Jonathan David to Manchester City for 123.3. And Evan Nielsen also to Manchester City for 109.5. Jesus Christ. Right. We'll actually get through deadline day first before showing you what other clubs in the league have done. I wouldn't. We're not. How are we stuck in a rut? We've literally, literally just won games. Go away with your stuck in the rut comments. Honestly, it doesn't make any sense. Seven hundred million pounds spent in deadline day in four hours. I think we might be past the billion again, lads. Junior Furpo to Aston Villa. In at left back, Danilo, per Danilo Pereira. Ricardo Pereira has left City to go to Bayern Munich. So at least making some of their money back. And actually, it's been a quiet next four hours. Uh, How? How can you bid for Sigankov? He just joined me. That's stupid. Fix that, please, EA. £900 million spent now on deadline day. Florentino goes to Leverkusen. Galazzi offer from Florentina. Florentina. Fiorentina, who play in Florence. Oh, I was going to say the side in Florence and... I got my brain all mixed up. Oh, we do pass the billion coin, billion coin, billion pound mark. Oh, I'll tell you what, I need rest, don't I? My brain is not putting sentences together very well. Bournemouth uh, signed Elvidi, Omlin, and presumably Lucas Mora. Uh, Arsenal, Lindelof, Ali, Ginter, and Arbaleda in with Allen, Zuma, Elvedi, and Martinet. Martinelli out. Interesting. Uh, Villa, Stones, Mauassa, Sumari and Furpo in. Aston Villa spending £160 million in a transfer window. I, well, I never. Sanchez, Milinkovic and El Estondo out. But Burnley spending £170 million. Fry, Aarons, Wilson, De Huda, I don't know as Burnley Football Club have ever had a £170 million if you totaled up their bank balance on every day ever for the history of the football club. Loft, McNeil, Corne and Veerman leaving them. Hernandez and... Dievsky, Dzevsky in at Chelsea with Goretzka and Pavard leaving. Nubel, Aurier, Moresic, Moresic, Ida and Benkovic in at Palace with Mitchell and Butlin leaving. We missed one yet. Everton, Guevara, Parrot and Angelino in with Leal, Sarachi and Godfrey leaving. Komen, Leal, Denaya and Tet in or Teta with Mestres, uh, Robinson and Vogo out. We've spent 200, I mean, I mean what can I say? When have Hull Football Club ever had £260 million to spend? Tony and Pinto out. Budawi, Haidara, Reynet, Ovara and Sanyon in at Leeds with Brunthwaite and uh, Dennis Pratt leaving. Liverpool have made quite a pretty penny. Uh, Al Alaba, Nonto, was it Nonto or Notto? Nonto and Paulinho in with Fabinho, Coletico, Coletta, Carl Jones, Williams and Wilson leaving, maybe more. Jesus Christ, City might have spent over £100 million on two players, but it's because they've made nearly half a billion in one window. Palaversa, Herrera, Kabak, Abraham, Suchek. Jesus, wet. Evan Nielsen, David, or David even, Klosterman and Kuza in. They must have sold, sold more than those five as well to make nearly £500 million. Verratti, Malinkovic in at United with Akanzi, Marquinhos, Moresic, Fosu Mensa and Berger leaving. Newcastle has spent 130 million. Los Celso and Williams coming in, but Luis Hidara, Tara Mayoral going out. They've actually made profit of 20 million. Mandy, Allen, and Correa in at Southampton with Nonto, Luca Bacchio, Tommy Asu, Dahoud, and Denier leaving. 
Tottenham have signed Fabinho, Pinto and Sutek. Sigankov, Lo Celso, Hojbjerg and Mount going up. So they still were able to sell Hojbjerg, despite me not being able to take him. And not Well, despite me not taking him in that player swap deal. Franco, Wind and Vera. Dominguez and Piazza and Bachmann. Hadji, Loft and Vargas in at West Brom with White out. West Ham have signed Berg, Buendia, Caballo Alonso and Adriano Boos with Matip and Calabria going out. And Kimpemba, Kabak, Kabak and Hackney in at Wolves with Holgate, Halstenberg, Vinicius and Dano leaving. What a ridiculous transfer window. FIFA does get a little bit crazy, doesn't it, when you get more than a couple of seasons in. Everybody seems to get so much money that there are just some silly transfers that go through. Sigankov plus 138.6 million pounds. Pinto to Spurs. Which didn't count on the top deals menu for some reason. Maybe because it's got a player swap involved. It can't physically show that on that little slate. I'm not sure if the graphic would fit. You saw the other three. Then Goretzka was 97.3 to Barcelona. Giovanni Lo Celso went to Newcastle for 94. Zagadou went to Barcelona. We were looking at him, weren't we, at City. Mason Mount, as we saw, to Real Madrid. Dwight McNeil to Napoli. Ratchets to uh, Villarreal. Martinelli went to Juventus for 81.2. He's 85 rated now. Deli Alli to Arsenal from Real Madrid. Marquinhos to Dortmund. Zaniolo to Bayern. Kimpemba to Wolves from, from Real Madrid. Kabak to Wolves as well. Tell you what, talk about strengthening at the back. Angel Correa to Southampton. McAllister to Valencia. Bernardo Silva to Leverkusen. Sander Berger went to her to Berlin. Plasios to Lazio. Luca Hernandez to Chelsea for 67.1. Demiral went to Bayern. I was thinking about looking at him for centre-back. That was from Sevilla. Fabinho to Spurs. Tammy Abraham went to Lyon. 27-year-old Tammy Abraham at 85 rated to Lyon. Sumare to Villa. Hojbjerg went to Dortmund. For 59.2 million pounds. Florian Wirtz to Leipzig. Kangin Lee to Inter Milan. Bazzi to Bologna. I don't know who that is. Yusuf Baji. Troy Parrott. What was he rated at the end? 82. Is that it? 53.1 million pounds to Everton. For an 82 rated player. That's a lot. Sutek who got inexplicably sent off in the game. Between Fulham and uh, West Ham. We just uh, had on the telly above me earlier on. How on earth he gave that as a record. Honestly, Mike Dean's just a twat, isn't he? Catterback to Hertha Berlin. Angelino's gone to Everton. Giletta Carr went to Sevilla. Uh, Florentino's late because we saw Benjamin Pavar went to Barcelona. Teo Hernandez, Dortmund. Kai Tomori from Wolfsburg to Roma. Chiesa to PSG. Klosterman went to, to Milan from Inter Milan. Oh, sorry, to City from Inter Milan. rashitz has gone to Sevilla. Jamal Lewis to Sevilla, of course, as we saw earlier in the window as well. Pellegrini we've signed. We'll see him take the field for the first time probably in the next episode where we should have some Carabao Cup football, which indeed we do against Crew, and some Champions League football for the very first time, which indeed we do against Locomotive Moscow. So to be fair, I'll probably sim. Maybe I play that and I'll sim West Brom at home and sim Crew. And elsewhere in our group we have Leverkusen and Benfica. That is a winnable Champions League group, don't you know? And our back-to-back -back wins have fired us up to fifth in the table. So we're looking pretty decent on getting ourselves back into good form to go towards the top of the table again. Although we are only on seven points. And top of the table, when it loads, Manchester City are on ten. Yeah, three points off top's not bad after four games after a dodgy start. Long way to go and a way that will hopefully see us return to the top. That's all for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Do drop the video a like if you enjoyed, of course. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on more. Please do check out that FM video. Still not decided what the future of that game is on YouTube, whether it be this channel, whether it be the second channel, whether I upload it at all. Depends what you guys are saying in that video. So check it out, please, and I will see you later.